Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone is doing good. And if you guys haven't checked out my latest video on the channel where I was unboxing my latest model car to the collection, um, it is the McLaren F1 LM edition. And as I promised in that video, I was going to be doing a in-depth review on this model. Um, so, but I wanted to make the video special because this is a special car. Some collectors recognize this as one of AutoArt's flagship models, the best AutoArt signature model ever made. Um, it's certainly one of the most expensive. This came up on a eBay auction last week and I decided to go for it. You don't really see many of these models come up for sale and if and if you do they are so expensive they are completely out of my budget but this one came up it was in the UK and I decided uh, to go for it now as I say this is a old school auto art signature model the McLaren F1 LM edition finished in their flagship orange I think it's called Papika orange now, with all auto art signature models, I reviewed loads of these on the channel before. It does come with the auto art certificate of authenticity, which I love. I love to display the um, certificate behind the model cars in the cabinet. And it also comes with the booklet on how the model car was put together by auto art, the amount of pieces, um, some of the processes used to, in manufacturing to build it. Um, I believe on the first page it says it's about 700 metal and plastic parts to build this model, which kind of puts into context how detailed AutoArt go with their signature range. It is one of the most spectacular models um, AutoArt have ever made. Um, and also it's the McLaren F1, so it's the um, kind of the best car of the 20th century as some collectors say but auto art signature have made so many great models why is the mclaren f1 lm considered to be one of the best let's just take a quick look down auto art signatures previous models to discuss why it is considered to be the best now also the pagani zonda r and the Pagani Zonda Revolution are also considered to be up there um, in the auto art signature range. These two are extremely highly detailed. Again, it's up there with the seven, eight hundred parts in metal or plastic parts in these model cars. And these two are now quite expensive. They're, they're similar prices to the F1, maybe a tad less expensive. You've got the Honda NSX Type R, a lovely model. You've got all of their Bugatti models that they made, which are very highly detailed. The Koenigseggs, the Lexuses. Um, again, you've got the um, Maserati as well. There are so many great models to, to choose when you're going for a old school auto art signature model. Which one kind of do you go for when you've got such a selection like this? And why is the McLaren F1 LM considered to be better than all of these models? So let's discuss this. Let's review the model. Let's take you through all of the details on the McLaren F1. And we might come back to um, these other auto art models to do um, side to side comparisons between the F1 and these. So the McLaren F1 LM. Now this car is based on the iconic McLaren F1 production car, the uh, the road car that I believe still holds the world record for the fastest top speed by a naturally aspirated engine at just over 240 miles an hour. And many car collectors consider the F1 to be the most iconic car or certainly the best driving car of the 20th century. Um, now McLaren took these F1 cars and they raced them at Le Mans, which is what we see here. This is a Le Mans car. Now McLaren also converted some of these back into road um, use. 
So that's where you get the uh, McLaren F1 GTR, where it loses loads of sound deadening. Um, it's lower, it's more aggressive, it's lighter. Um, and those are some of the most expensive cars in the world. Um, but the designer, who, who's world famous, Gordon Murray, designed this car to be as light as possible and to be the best driving car, um, or better than all their competitors at the time. So he was the iconic designer, designer of the central driving position, that three-seater cockpit layout with the driver in the middle flanked by two passengers either side. The McLaren F1 has a naturally aspirated 6-litre V12 engine built by BMW Power in the mid-90s, um, producing, I think, around 630 horsepower. The LM edition might produce a little bit more being, on, being based on a um, race car. But as I say, I still think the McLaren F1 holds the top speed for the for the highest top speed for a naturally aspirated engine at just over 240 miles an hour and this car is the best part of 20 25 years old which just tells you how iconic this car is it's still holding the um, world record 20 years on um, as technology moves so quickly no cars have yet to challenge it or surpass its record which I find um, absolutely amazing. Now the McLaren F1, and the reason why I bought the, L the LM edition over the road car, I prefer the styling of this. There are some differences between this and the road car. For example, you've got the, um, the splitter at the front, which is carbon fiber. You've got the louvres, you've got the spoiler, you've got different aero at the rear as well. Um, and I just think it, it just looks a bit more aggressive, it's styled more aggressively, and it's just more orientated to what the car was actually built to do, which I, um, I quite like. And um, also, AutoArt did make um, the production car. They made it in a few different colours. They made it in um, white, silver and black, I believe. And um, there, was, there are some differences between the road car and the LM edition. But let's take a little quick walk around the, um, the F1 LM edition before I do a complete in-depth review on it. Now again, this is one of AutoArt's best ever models. And I'll be showing you all the little details shortly. But let's just take a little... Um, spin around and check out the entire model car now again the details the shut lines the quality of materials the the whole presence of the model is just absolutely outstanding um, and the way it just sits especially in the cabinet compared to the other auto art models which i've just showed you is just um, amazing um, as i say this is one of AutoArt's most expensive models. Um, is it worth the money? Um, I'm sure you guys know how much these go for on eBay. I'll leave that down to you. I think it is because you're not really going to find another McLaren F1 um, with this same level of detail in 118 scale. Um, unless you go to like Amalgam or other um, higher end manufacturers like that. But I feel that it was a, um, a good model to get and a good model to add to my auto art collection. So this is just one of the best models auto art have made. And let's start taking a look through the, um, the front of the model, showing you the, um, the details that auto art have put here. So the front of the model again. So let's take a look at the front end of the model car. Um, and start the in-depth review of the model. Now, as I say, I think you can only buy this car in um, this, this specification, this color specification, orange. Orange is um, McLaren's kind of flagship color, and um, I think it suits the model really well. It's a bright color um, for a very iconic car. Um, I think it's called Papika Orange, if I'm not mistaken. 
um, but I think it does look very nice and Altoart have done a great job with the paint application on the model. There's no rashes, there's no high spots or low spots. It's very evenly coated um, and it's got a very nice depth to the paintwork um, across the whole model car, which is very, very nice. So let's take a look at the front end of the model. The headlights are done very nicely. Um, you can see the main, the main headlights quite clearly through the um, clear plastic lens. You've got the louvers on either side of the, um, the model, which I believe reduces the pressure in the um, front wheel arch to stop the car from lifting. Um, but all twice I've done a great job with these. You can see the, um, the mesh between, which is very nicely done. Good details. You've got the mesh here at the front. Um, this bit opens up, and I'll show you that later, um, where it's got the air intakes at the front. We've got the McLaren badge at the front as well. Now, this is not the McLaren logo. This is more of um, just the McLaren in text, the, um, the old badge that McLarens used to have. You've also got the um, indicators at the front as well, because this one has been converted back into road use. Um, and you've got all the openings at the front as well. You've got loads of different air intakes at the front for cooling, for cooling the brakes as well. And Autoart have covered all of these with this black metal mesh. Um, and Autoart have kind of left no stone unturned when it comes to quality and details on this model car. Every air intake you see is covered with uh, mesh really nice mesh that you can see through and see even more details beyond that which is so um, iconic with auto art they really do step up their game really really nicely um, for the front here this does open up and it's held in place with two magnets on either side so it's really good quality of materials as well you don't feel like this is going to come off or um, when you're putting it on you're not you don't feel like you're breaking anything it's really secure and um, Ottawa again have done a really good job. Even the windscreen wiper as well is really, really nicely done. Um, you can see different mechanisms with the wiper as well, which you don't really see on other um, 118 models or um, 118 models that compete with Ottawa. I always think Ottawa is head and shoulders above the rest when it comes to die cast model cars. So that's the front end of the model car, and it is really really nice and um, very good job there by auto art if we take a look around the side of the model car now again like most race cars the wheel nuts on the left hand side are red and on the right hand side i think they're blue now i don't know quite the reason why they have different color wheel nuts on different side of the model car i think it's um for the mechanics and the pit crew maybe, um, I'm not sure. If you know, please um, let me know in the comments. I'll be quite interested to find out why. But let's take a look at these amazing wheels. Now again, Autoart have done a great job with these wheels. I feel like they have left no details out. They've also embossed the LMF1 into the rim. If you can see it right at the bottom there, um, it is actually in the wheel. It's not a sticker and um, it's not a little um, clip on thing. It's really, really nicely done. You've got the red center locks with the F1 in the middle. You've got the huge Brembo caliper. Um, as you can see that as well. Um, really nicely done. And you've got the huge discs as well that literally cover the entire size of the wheel. Um, again, the details here are amazing. Even the tyres are really nicely done. Full rubber tyres and you can see the tyre valve as well. Um, and it's just really nicely done. The, um, the discs go through the caliper as well. Um, fully working, as you know, fully working wheels, suspension. Um, you can turn the steering wheel and it will turn the um, front wheels. But it's just very, very nicely done. And also all of these shut lines as well. I mean, the door opens and the um, the side compartment opens as well. But the, the shut lines are so neat and so tidy as well that um, it's quite rare on a fully open and die cast model. Um, this car 
opens up everywhere and I'll show you that after the exterior but it's um, all to I've done a great job with the um, the shut lines as well um, and also there is so much detail inside which um, I'll show you guys you can see the um, the headsets for the passengers to communicate with each other um, because this car is the LM edition it's lost all the soundproofing it's um, very very loud um, so all to what I've even got the headsets in there which I absolutely love to see now again you've got the uh, the side compartment now on the LM edition only one side compartment opens up the other one is closed on the production car um, I'm sure you guys know both of the side compartments open up and it comes with its own luggage set um, and it's got a bit more um, details in there like the carpets um, and the luggage um, but on the LM edition you don't get the luggage set um, and only one compartment opens up because um, I guess it's more of a race car um, so you don't get all the um, luxuries of the road car but let's come over oh let's discuss the um, the rear wheels as well because again they are a work of art much like the front again great details with the rear wheels you can tell they're a little bit bigger you've got the Brembo discs um, and the Brembo calipers as well with the um, F1 LM um, kind of engraved into the wheel really nice details by Autoart and um, it's such a great design and Autoart again have done a really good job um, with the wheels let's come over to the uh, the rear of the model now again unlike the road car you've got this huge um, carbon fiber spoiler at the rear in order to aid the downforce this is the race car um, I quite like it what do you guys think in the comments with the um, the spoiler I know Gordon Murray designed the F1 without it because he wanted wanted it to have more of a flowing lines um, and it was more designed for top speed um, but the race car obviously you need downforce you're going down the track corners um, I, I don't think it spoils the look of the car I quite like it with it um, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments what you guys think of it. But let's this, uh, this whole engine bay opens up, and I'll show you guys that in a minute. But the whole um, engine bay cover is a work of art. Again, you've got the roof scoop with the um, grills in there. You've got the cooling grills on either side as well of the spine, which have got metal grills in. Really nicely done. You can see quite a lot of engine detail through the um, clear plastic on the engine cover which is amazing lots of details in there which I um, which I'll show you guys in a minute but the whole rear of the model is quite nicely done the exhausts I'm not too sure of um, they look good they look okay I'm happy with them but I feel like all to art maybe could have done a little bit more with them I know you can open up this as well um, this bit here if you unscrew these two screws on either side and you can see the whole exhaust system it's A work of art it really is I'll um, I'll leave pictures in there once I um, open up the um, engine but it is absolutely very highly detailed and again all of this is full metal mesh grills really nicely done you've got the F1 LM badge here the number plate and then you've got the McLaren badge at the bottom the tail lights are done nicely as well um, I really can't say anything um, necessarily bad about this model car I feel like it is Auto Art's best work and the details here are second to none. So let's come round over to the other side. Now again, as I said, on this side there is blue centre locks and on the other side they were red. Um, again, I think it's for the pit crew, I'm not entirely sure, but I quite like it. Um, I know the Maserati MC12 have got the, has got the same thing and Auto Art's done a great job there as well. But um, again, I quite like the look of it, and um, I think it suits the, the car, because the, it's a race car, it's a GTR. Um, and also on this side, you've got the air intake as well, which has got the, um, the metal grills as well on the side, which I quite like. Um, and again, lots of detail here as well. You've got the um, side indicator lights as well. You've got the button for the doors. And again, the wheels are done very nicely. You can see the Brembo calipers, the huge discs, the rims are done nicely as well. 
and the, even on the um, the side plates on the spoiler, you can see the GTR and the McLaren just underneath it. So that's kind of the exterior of the model car. Let's um, let's walk you guys through some of the interior as well. So I've got some of the um, compartments opened up on the model car. Um, so let's take a look at some of this fantastic level of detail by AutoArt. Now again, AutoArt also provide the instructions on how to open up various compartments on the model car. It, it comes with the AutoArt opening tool, which is really nice. It's really easy to follow. And um, I think it um, really sets um, some confidence with collectors um, because opening up different compartments, if you don't know how to do it, um, it can be quite challenging and on expensive model cars um, you don't really want to be messing around with them too much you just want to be able to confidently open up the um, compartments without worrying that you're going to scratch or damage anything so i quite like the um, instructions that it comes with so let's take a look through the um, the front bit of the um, mclaren f1 now again this is the um, the cooling system at the front of the model car the openings at the front, just above the um, the splitter, come in through this as well, and I think this cools down the um, the front discs at the front end of the model car. But it's also finished in carbon fiber. It looks really nice, and you can also see some of the um, the washer fluids as well. I believe um, whether that's um, windscreen washer, headlight washer. Um, I think it, there's lots of detail in there. Again, all finished in carbon fiber. And you can see the um, the magnets right at the top as well. Two magnets that hold the um, the front bit down. Very highly detailed. Good qualities of materials used, and um, some of AutoArt's um, best details, really. I think um, AutoArt always nail carbon fiber um, details. They make them look fantastic, and um, this model is no exception at all. Now again, both doors do open up. They open up upwards, and I will show you guys that last. Um, but it does look very, very nice. There's lots of details in there. Now again, the um, the McLaren F1. If you want to store luggage, it has the um, the side compartments for luggage. Now again, there's not much detail in there. It's not finished as nicely as the road car. But again, this is the LM edition, it's the GTR, it's the race version. So um, it's very bare in there. As I say, there's no luggage um, with this model car. It's not even finished in a carpet finish. It's just very bare, very minimal um, in order for light weight. Um, this car is designed to be as light as possible. Um, you can also see other various different hoses and different mechanisms in there as well. Um, but again... The road car, both side compartments open up and you get the luggage set with it. It's finished nicer with the carpets and the velvet um, finishings. But for the LM edition, it doesn't have that. Um, but it does look very nice. And also, I might add, on all of these openings, um, the hinges are absolutely amazing. They're literally like the real thing. Um, they're very well put together. Um, they're very realistic. And the mechanisms used to open and close different compartments is really very, very nicely done by um, AutoArt. And the whole finishing on the inside is carbon fiber. And you can see the magnets at the top that hold this in place. So I can just push this back into place and it clips back in. It's just very nicely done. The qualities of materials used are amazing. Um, and um, I, it's just one of the um, the best models that I've got in um, my collection. So let's take a look at the engine bay, the iconic six litre V12, 630 brake horsepower BMW engine. Now again, just like the road car, um, you can see some of the gold details, especially at the top. Um, if you guys look at the top of the engine cover, you can see the gold finishing there as well. Now, Gordon Murray used gold because it, at the time, and I think still is, it is one of the best heat reflectors um, out there as well. 
Um, so it is finished in gold and around the engine um, it's got gold lining as well. But also you've got these um, air intakes right at the top that link the link with the um, the roof scoop as well. Finished in carbon fibre. Very nicely done. You can see the rear windows as well. Um, again with the um, kind of, I think this is kind of soundproofing around the windows. Very nicely done. Um, but again, look at the hinges at the top um, as well. So realistic. Um, the, the movement of the hinges are nice as well. Um, and it's just absolutely um, great levels of details by Autoart. Now let's take a bit of a closer dive in with the engine. You can see it's also finished in the same color as the body. And you can see BMW, M Power, McLaren, and all of the other different um, components down there it's sitting quite low down the better weight distribution better balance better handling but um, again that's all you can really see um, I know if you compare that to the Zonda R or the Revolution or some of uh, some of them um, some other auto art signature models the engine bay does look a bit nicer on them but again the engine bay is sitting quite low down um, but you can still see loads of detail with the engine bay um, and it is absolutely um, fantastic levels of details by AutoArt. So let's close down this um, top um, engine cover very slowly. And it is very nicely done with the hinges. And then it just clips back in like that. Very nicely done. So let's take a look at the um, interior of the um, McLaren F1. Now again, the iconic three-seater design which um, Gordon Murray created. Um, I'll try and get a better view for you guys so you can see more of the um, interior. But again, you just lift it up through underneath the door. Now I'm not sure if the door will stay open. Um, it hasn't in the past. Um, but again, um, sorry, um, because the door doesn't quite, I can feel it, like it's not gonna stay open. But you can see the headset in there. The, um, the driver's seat is in orange. There's so much detail as well. Even the gear stick cover is in orange as well. Um, you've got no carpets. Um, very minimalistic. Um, you can see the carbon fibre driving zone as well with the chassis and carbon fibre. Um, the steering wheel's got Alcantara finish with the F1 in the centre. Um, it is very, very highly detailed in there. Um, the doors feel very nice as well. Um, very heavy, which you don't really feel on a composite model. Um, they feel very light compared to all to our signature models. But each of these compartments feel very weighty, very good levels of detail and good qualities of material used as well. So let's just um, kind of do a quick summary of this model car. I mean... This is one of AutoArt's best ever model cars they've ever made, if not the best ever. Um, now I've showed you guys um, my other AutoArt signature models um, and what do you guys think in comparison? Do you guys um, think this is the best ever or would, do you guys prefer some of AutoArt's other works like the Zondas, the, the Bugattis, the Koenigseggs, the Lambos? Um, for me personally, this is a 10 out of 10 model car. Um, I can't find much wrong with it, to be honest. Um, it is absolutely perfect. It is as of the real thing you're going to get. And um, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe and um, comment. And um, I've got lots more videos to come. Lots more model cars on pre-order as well, which um, I'm waiting on. Um, but I look forward to sharing them all on the channel with you guys and um, hearing um, your voices in the comments, which I reply back to all of them. So um, thank you very much for watching. And I say please like and subscribe and I will see you guys very soon for more videos to come. Take care.